get a good medical care in Spain. They got an ambulance for me, took me straight to the hospital. What happened to your knees in that case? I'm a disabled veteran from the United States Army. Did you have any health issues? I had the shakes and like I had a fever. So I walked with an injury until I couldn't walk anymore. Hi, we are Eric and Ricky. We not only walk Camino de Santiago and try the best food, but we also help others in the preparation and ask them important questions. Today we'll ask how injuries enhance or impair your Camino de Santiago experience. Um, my name is Leslie Cruz. I'm from Puerto Rico, Rincón, Puerto Rico, and I'm 60 years old. My name is Corky Rogers. I'm from Rincón, Puerto Rico, and <laughs> I'm 67. Which Camino did you just complete? Camino Frances. Was it the first one? Second. Second. Okay. I'm 62, my name's Clav Wright, and I'm from Durban, South Africa. Was it your first Camino? Yes, first Camino. My name is Adrian. I'm from San Diego, California, and I'm 75 years young. Which Camino you've been walking? The French way, and also a different kind of Camino. I'm not sure which way it was. Uh, my name is Amy Rulo. I'm 63, and I'm from Cape Cod in Massachusetts on the United, in the United States. Which Camino did you just complete? I did the Francis. It was amazing. Why did you repeat it? Uh, because uh, last May I was injured, and I missed three weeks in La Meseta. So I told, and he missed part of it because of work. So uh, we just decided to just redo and finish, fill up all the gaps and continue on. Yeah. And, How yeah. did you find it? I found it amazing. I found it more um, enriching this year mm -hmm. than last year, probably because of the weather, because I came later in June and I was cold in May yeah. due to climate for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Being from Puerto Rico where it's 85 degrees every day, <laughs> Um, 50 degree weather is, is very challenging for us. For him. For, for, with her knees and ankles when she yeah. had you know, disability. Yeah. What happened to your knees in that um, Well, I have um, old injuries. I'm a disabled veteran from the United States Army. Was it difficult to walk the Camino? Yes, it was. There were some very tough times. I had a bit of an upset. I landed up in hospital for one week and two weeks to recover back on the way and walked away. Do you find that is a difficult to get a good medical care in Spain? No, it was fantastic. I was at an albergue when the incident happened. They got an ambulance for me, took me straight to hospital, emergency operation. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. The, the doctors and the the nurse and medical staff. Could you tell us what happened? Yeah, my plans and my hopes and aspirations were dashed with a severe injury that hospitalized me on day eight. You know, one thing about getting older doesn't necessarily guarantee you're gonna get smarter. So I walked with an injury until I couldn't walk anymore. Mm -hmm. During my convalescing, I had bought a ticket to go home. And my Camino was over and I was disappointed in myself for getting injured. Or, I was going to let down my friends and my family, so I thought I wanted to stay on the Camino. Did you have any health issues? I did. I did. I, um, I had some stomach issues with eating. Um, and I think people need to be aware of the fact that your body is doing so much work and you've got to keep your body nourished more than what you think and I almost had to leave the Camino because I lost so much weight really fast and I had the shakes and like I had a fever um, from dehydration and just because I wasn't eating enough and then I couldn't eat. So I learned little bits all day long, all day long and then meals and I got better. It took me a while to learn it, but that's what you have to do. You have to listen to your body prompted by my wife to find a way to stay on the Camino if I could, mostly by going from town to town on crutches. And that was, I did that for three or four days and that wasn't any fun because I couldn't move. Mm -hmm. And it really lacked a lot of soul or any soul and lacked any meaning. And then uh, this idea came to me to 
be on the Camino by being with other pilgrims. So I went back to the Camino, only I did it in a van. So, uh, you know, um, weather, climate stuff, you know, if I don't it's wear a lot of clothes, I, the, yeah, yes. The pressure, bariat bariatric pressure. Yeah. And uh, so, so I get arthritis and stuff like that, but I'm okay. How did you deal with Camino with this uh, arthritis and all this? I highly recommend using poles. Um, I, my ankles, I would have to wear boots because bad ankles. So if you have bad ankles, I highly recommend wearing um, boots and stuff. And uh, yeah, I just packed extra. I had to carry an extra bag. I cannot carry everything on my back. I cannot. I imagine that you have the uh, uh, insurance, right? Yes, I had the extra travel insurance. Yeah, okay, money well spent. It's always is. Who, I would never have thought that would happen to me. And they say the Camino provides. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not what you're looking for, but I think the lessons from it were what I needed. And how is the Camino after the, the, the hospital stay? I found it quite difficult. We, uh, I started a, started a little family, we were just growing, so I only walked with them for like nine days. And basically by the time I started walking again, they had all finished. Mm, yeah. So it was a little bit difficult in that sense, but it, it was the same. The, everyone walking the Camino has got something in common. Completely different, different languages, different countries, but we've got something in common. And you can, you can feel that, and you can feel, for me, I could feel along the way, the people who've walked it already. Uh, met an incredible Spanish man by the name of Bruno, who be just an absolute angel of a human being. And so we rented the van, we bought umbrellas and chairs and blankets and coolers and misters and bins for soaking your feet in. We bought ice packs, we bought apples, oranges, bananas every day. We bought protein bars and candies and sodas and we set up on the Maceta mostly where pilgrims needed the most help. And it was, originally it was going to be for two days, maybe three. I rented the van for three-day contract. We were on the Maceta for almost a month. I'm so glad I didn't go home. Uh, as a result, my foot got stronger. And as I got stronger, I was able to join up with some friends and walk the last three days into Santiago. So and now in Santiago. Then you said that along the way you also got blisters. Yes, I did. Mostly from going down, I think. I'm not sure my shoes, I think, were right, but maybe my socks weren't quite right. Um, and I found out I was allergic to compete. It made things really worse. So, and I found out soaking your feet in Epsom salts helps cure the ugly feet. But yeah, so it was, it was tough, but I overcame it. They told me I had to stop walking and I said, no, I'm gonna make this work. And tape those toes. Tape the toes. <laughs> Tape those toes. Take good care of your feet. Yes. Did you get blisters? Or? Yes. Yes. The first time. And then we yes. taped all the toes. We put tape around the hot spots and we kept on walking and I just tape them every day. It. No more hot spots. Yep. They just all got hard, healed over and got, um, and that was it. We were on our way. No problems. Okay. Yeah. How did you make it work? What changed after all these drawbacks that you had? So when I went to take three days off because of my blisters, I stayed at a place in Samos with a lovely ex-pilgrim who took care of my feet. And she said, Amy, you're gonna walk. So I listened to everything she did. She fixed my feet up and I did send my pack forward to take some of the weight off my back. And I just kept going and my feet got better and better. And I made it here even with, I think it was 35 days. So even taking days off, I'm, I made up some time and I am so grateful, so grateful. But yeah, blisters is definitely a trial and error. What kind of socks, what kind of this, it's, it's tough, definitely tough. Um, what would you say to people who are actually passing through that moment of, of self-doubt that, that they cannot walk because of the pain or the injuries. But we had medical doctors from the Ukraine, from the UK, from, from the Netherlands. I saw advise other pilgrims about resting. And the, I, I gotta, we offered to carry their packs in the van. No, I gotta carry my pack, I won't be a purist. No, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Meanwhile, their knees are the size of a basketball. And I can speak from personal experiences, pain, 
comes with ignorance. You don't have to be in pain. If you listen to your body, the Camino will provide. The Camino's been here for 1,200 years. It'll be here when you come back. Don't push through the pain. Don't, because it could affect you and cripple you for life. Mm -hmm. Those aren't my words of wisdom because I pushed through the pain until I couldn't anymore. Hearing those inspiring stories, you might be feeling motivated to start your Camino journey. Before you embark, consider joining us on a special retreat designed to prepare you both physically and mentally. Our retreat offers personal guidance, expert advice, and a supportive community to ensure you're ready for adventure ahead. Sign up to secure your spot and start your Camino with confidence. Click the link below to learn more and register for our pre-Camino retreat. Don't miss this opportunity to make your Camino experience truly unforgettable.